All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are spectating Mr. F and his quad team. They did land over here to the northwest side of the map, which is usually a little bit slower of a start. These guys are landing here. That way they can gather their stuff, get their money, get their loadout, and hopefully get back into the action before the game's halfway finished. Now, when you land in the game, you guys need to make a decision. Do you want to go hot and just risk dying just to try to get some gunplay and some mechanics and fighting down? Or do you guys want to try to secure the win by landing somewhere relatively safe, getting your money, and getting your loadout? Either one is a great decision, but you need to make that decision. Don't be trying to land Superstore if you're trying to get money for a loadout and play a passive game. And vice versa. Don't be landing here expecting a hot drop. Know the areas. It's pretty basic if you're falling into Verdansk. It's got a name over it. It's probably going to be a hot spot. I mean, already, look at the money situation. We have um, roughly $20,000. So we can go ahead, get the loadout drop, get some UAVs, get some more UAVs, get some self reses whatever we want. The sky's the limit. Here we are taking the teleport door, going all the way over to the farmland area. And even more money. Got an advanced UAV. That's even better. We get to save a little bit of money because we get that for free. Now, I love advanced UAVs. However, if I'm going to be playing aggressive going after fights, I'd rather have a UAV because advanced UAVs, yes, it does show everyone on the map, but at the same time, it doesn't show their elevation or exactly where they're at. So if you use an advanced UAV, you decide to push an enemy, you really don't have any idea what floor he's camping on if he's in a building. If you use a normal UAV, you have a lot more information, but you do sacrifice knowing where everyone on the map is. But don't let me deter you guys from buying advanced UAVs. They're definitely crucial, and I'm a huge fan of them, um, especially if you get it for free. But I see a lot of players when we're spectating, especially randoms, they'll sit there, they'll save all their money so that they can go out of their way and buy an advanced UAV, when in reality, I'd rather have three UAVs spread across a longer time, and again, show me the elevation of the enemies we're going to be running into. All right, but right now, we have split from our team. I'm a little surprised. I really was expecting everyone to come with us. Um... But now we're on two completely opposite ends of the map. This may not have been my first decision, to be honest. Again, if we would have traveled together, it could have been a little bit better because then we could start fighting some more team fights. But it looks like we're going to have to travel a little bit further than we really wanted to in order to get some fights won. We do have an enemy behind us, and you have. We don't have to go chase him down. He is out of zone, and we will have to... You know, worry about rotating after that. So he's going to continue onwards. To be honest, I'm not really sure what his game plan is. This is a little bit of, uh, I'd say, wasted time. But at the same time, it's not because you do get a huge bag. The problem, though, is if we run into a sweaty team, we might lose that huge bag because of the separation from our teammates. We are slowly closed in on them, though. So whatever they're fighting, we might be able to go ahead and get into a pinch situation. All right, so we have pings going out from our team, marking guys over in our area. So we should, again, be able to go ahead and pinch these guys. All right, we're approaching Purple Mark. There's the guy right there running out in the open. And he's going to be really surprised when we catch him out in the open. Now, look at this, guys. It's been about, I'd say, 30, maybe 60 seconds. I could be exaggerating with that 60 seconds, but it's been about 30 seconds since the enemy was pinged in his spot, yet still he is right here. Why? Probably because he's crouch walking, probably because he just doesn't know what to do. This guy got caught out in the open and it's his own fault. There are plenty of ways to rotate from area to area and still have some cover. There's no reason for anyone to be caught out in the open like this. And just like normal players, we jump out the vehicle, we go ahead, ADS on them and beam them. We do have enemies to our right hand side as well that were yeah, popped up on the UAV right there. Let's see how he approaches this fight, or if he even does. We do have a shit ton of money. We could grab a UAV, so that hopefully we can get a little bit more intel on where those guys are actually at. And they do have a chopper also. They do have two choppers, so it could be an aggro squad. And I think he's realizing that as well. And we're going to kind of move out, get with our team before we engage that. And look, no matter how great of a player you are, if you guys are goaded, if you notice another squad is doing some decent strategy, or they have decent aim or they're hitting their shots, you need to halt your super aggressiveness and trying to dive into a 1v4 and get with your team. And just seeing those two choppers parked right there in the buy station, that had me a little worried too. I'm glad Mr. F decided to divert from that. Put the blood. 
Gravity, you have grabbing the advanced again and popping a self res. And look, we, we have one kill with 80 players left. I'm not sure how many kills he gets this game. All right, finally using the advanced UAV, and here we have other targets out in the open. This was not a bad spot to do it because, again, there's a lot of wide open areas around us. Now, my question is, what is this dude doing? Where, where is he going? Can someone please in the comments let me know what the hell this guy's doing? Where is he going? He wasn't coming here. He's just running to the mountain with auto sprint on. I'm a little confused about that. Now, I like the fact that you use the advanced UAV in this situation because we know there's going to be a lot of teams around this area. There's a bunch of buy stations. You have airport to the south. You have the hill. We've got plenty of pings going on, so we know there's enemies there. And we also have a Bertha to our right-hand side. Um, but the thing that really bothers me is watching players do this. Y'all run out in the open by yourself without a plan, right? And we can tell he has no plan because he's running into nothing. So I'm a little thrown off right now. All we got to do is wait patiently for this guy to peek. And there it is. I got again. Analyzing the map, spotting another player flying down. And they hopped out of the vehicle. I don't know if they hopped out of the vehicle or if it's a different team. It might be a different team, but here we are going to go ahead. Now, look, guys, again. Savage, stop pausing the video. Look, dudes, again, you have a mini map, fam. Let's look at this mini map real quick and let's analyze this. So. Before anyone says, well, Savage, they they can't see him on the minimap, bro. Y yeah, they can, because we can see him on the minimap. Minimap is big as shit, all right? So when these guys are fighting these other dudes, they're so hyper-focused on their crosshair, they're not utilizing their HUD, right? They're not looking at the minimap or anything else. This is what you guys need to stop doing. Even if I'm shooting at somebody, the moment that I'm reloading, the moment that they're hide behind cover and I'm just holding the angle, I'll start glancing at the minimap. Now, while I'm shooting and trying to beam the guy, of course I won't be, but this whole time, he was not putting bullets into this enemy. Hell no. He was just sitting there looking at him, waiting for the reload and, and just all this other stuff. He's doing too much extra shit, not doing the things he needs to be doing. He should have seen Big Bertha pull up behind him. He should have seen it go from red to white and he should be turning around or taking cover. That way he can contest us. But again, this is another one of those common mistakes that most players make and they sit here wondering how they always get third party. They're like, savage! How do I stop getting shot in the back? Mini map, guys. Literally, <laughs> mini map. There's no secret cheat codes out there, guys. All right, go, jumping back to cover because the enemy did as well. Now we need to go ahead and push this asshole. Oh, nope, he jumped down. And look, the importance of the mini map. The only reason we knew that he jumped down and went around to the left hand side using that wall as cover is because the mini map. That's literally it. Nah, all right, again, these enemies here, they should have heard all the gunfire going around them. And they're being shot from the hill. And look at the separation. The first of all, there's a guy right here that came in here for whatever reason. I understand there's probably a loot box in there. I get that. But again, they're being shot from our guys at the hill. And they should have heard us fighting once again. There's a lot of shit going on. So guys, if you know there's enemies next to you, don't put yourself in a position like this. This is, this is dumb. You're putting yourself in a cubby and it's going to be extremely easy to, to get the kill. Any storage locker, guys, is literally an instant death. Especially if they have stuns. Oh, his teammates going to, the, to it as well. Look at that. Oh, my God. So weird. Now, if I was Mr. F, I'd go ahead and just jump out. These guys are in a terrible spot. We really don't need to play super strategic right now because I know that they're bad players. Again, because of how they're playing right now. So I would just go in and brum rush these assholes. Look at them just sitting there. The hesitation. We do have a stun grenade. There it is. Oh, weird. We went ahead and bounced it off the wall. Didn't get a hit marker with it, which is kind of strange. Thanks, Activision. But there's his homeboy. Both of them are hiding in there. Again, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? UAV up, man. Another UAV up. Guy still sitting down there by the buy station. Look, if you want to play passive, that by all means, do it. Do you guys play how you want, but dude, you need... Come Bruh! And still, he's not even... Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. His teammate that just went down isn't calling anything out. He's probably screaming, probably throwing his controller, probably banging his head through the wall. Who knows what he's doing, but he definitely did not call us out. Now, there's two issues with this. One, of course, no call outs, no pings. His, they have no idea where he's at. Two, this guy that's alive still, 
He should have heard the suppressed shots. He should have. If you have a headset, you should hear some directional sound. Now, maybe he doesn't have a headset. Maybe he doesn't have surround sound. And that's, that's a story for another day. But a lot of players do this shit still. So many times we see someone get clapped and his teammates are just kind of sitting there like ants. Like, where, where the hell is it at? Well, if you don't have good audio, again, rely on some good teammates. And also, if these guys, going back to what I was saying before, before we rudely interrupted, but if these guys want to play passive, go play passive. Stop being around enemies that are fighting each other if you guys don't want to deal with it. If you, if you hear some gunshots around y'all and you want to run, just run. Or start fighting, but don't just sit here in this like... What's the word I'm looking for? Don't, don't just sit there without making a decision. That's what it is at the end of the day. All right, enemy cluster strike coming in. We're just going to go ahead and jump off again, guys. Huge waste of a cluster. Um, cluster. Huge waste of a cluster strike. It just doesn't make any damn sense. It's probably the worst streak in Call of Duty history, um, especially in a war zone mode. It just doesn't make any sense at all. I'd rather precisions, but don't waste it just to get a knock, guys. Because even if you get the knock, we, all we got to do is crawl sideways and avoid it or... We just don't get knocked in the first place. Hey. We just jump down like we did. I see so many people wasting clusters and precisions on shit they shouldn't be. Use clusters and precisions to go for an execute if you really want to, but I like to go ahead and use it for suppressing the enemy if I'm in a bad spot. If an enemy driving around behind us is going back and forth, back and forth, again, lack of decision making is preventing him from coming up behind us and essentially pinching us the enemy that we're fighting. Granted, not much of a pinch because the enemy is not much of a contest, but nonetheless, it's better to fight. It's better to fight than to drive right in front of the enemy. I mean, dude, you, did you see how fast we disabled that vehicle? Did you see that? That's not new, that's, that's normal, especially in quads, guys. You got four people shooting in your car, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna get disabled. So again, look, granted he's by himself, so we're gonna take him fighting us out of the option. That makes more sense, right? But if, but don't, don't drive right next to us, what are you doing? Drive around, wide flanks, man, get the hell out of there. Get the hell out of there. The All right, but again, we had such a slow start. We had one kill with 80 players up, and now we're sitting on eight with 47. Again, just because it's a slow game, if as long as you have your gulag and you have your weapons and stuff, don't back out and say this game's chalk. You can always have some really good games. You just clutch up mid and late game. Not to mention, there's a lot of people alive right now with this size circle. We do have any floating above us. Look at this guy just sitting on the corner. What are you doing, brother? <laughs> oh my God, what are you doing? No! <laughs> Mr. F, bro, I'm gonna be honest. No! No, 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 no. You, I mean, granted, he's got a lot of faith in his sniping ability, but it may be a little too much in that one. Guns are just too damn broken, man. That none of them have recoil. So even if someone has bad aim, it's usually relatively easy for them to go ahead and get the hits off on you, maybe even down and kill you. All right, sitting here scanning around right now. Normally, whoa, whoa, behind us. Interesting. Scanning the rooftop, trying to play this. Now, the only thing we need to worry about is someone coming up the zip lines. The one right next to us and the one... Yep, yep. Oh, my God. Balls he played from this guy here. He heard us shooting. He decided to make a play on it. Was hoping there's only one of us, but he should have heard two snipers up here. He almost, he almost got it off. If we wouldn't have been observant, he could have possibly got the double kill. Now, look. The reason why I'm pausing the video and pointing that out is a lot of you guys, again, going back to the beginning of this video, you get tunnel visioned. Right, you start shooting at an enemy, and y'all just wanna y'all wanna kill them. So y'all just sit there, mount it up, waiting for the enemy to leave his cover to run out in the open, and then you'll start beaming them. Right, what you need to do mid fight, if the enemy goes behind cover, take a quick glance around you and go back to the fight. There's no reason to sit there and hold that damn angle that hard, especially when you're in a vulnerable position like this. We got a lot of repel systems right here, and I'm really glad to see that Mr. F actually looked around and was able to catch the enemy up. That's why the enemy went up on the zip line, though was for the fact that most players tunnel vision so usually if you hear an enemy in a gunfight you can confidently push up there now if i was that guy i would have gone to the zip line a little bit further down that way i wouldn't have been right next to him and maybe would have won that fight 
Oh my god. These guys right here to the, to the 300 are a pain in the ass. Now notice how we're not jumping down there to get the execute right now. Right? We got the down, but we're not sitting there and just going to bail off to get the execute. We're going to play the situation first. Analyze the entire thing. And that's the reason why we had two sets of tracers coming out of us just now. We had, we had two sets of tracers coming at us just now. Again, going back to that knock, a lot of people, they get really thirsty. And trust me, I've been in this position. Nothing sucks more than getting a knock and having somebody crawl faster than people can actually crawl in real life to get safe and get res. It's a pain in the ass, I get it. But you need to analyze the entire situation. You're playing quads. We had one pick, no one else shot, but it doesn't mean that no one else is there. So I love the fact that we finished playing the 300 to see what that enemy was to hopefully take him out. When we couldn't, we came back this way and now we're able to assess the situation. We know that there's a full team down there. Also another team push up the zip line right now on this side. He's by himself, he's able to... Oh no, and they were able to flank us, unfortunate. Can we get the res off? Absolutely not. All right, but here we are coming back in. And it looks like we're going to try to go to the rooftop to get our shit. This is a big dick play right here. Um, I would definitely imagine that the enemies are probably be holding this angle. We didn't even scan the rooftop as we're coming in. We just we just full sent this. Not not really too huge of a fan of that one. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I would not do that if I were y'all. Because again, it's a good spot. It's on the edge of the circle. If you look at the zone, this is a good gatekeeping position. And a lot of players that play for wins like to play the high ground. This is a good spot. Here we are trying to analyze the situation, not spotting any glints. So we look to be safe from snipers. Here's this poor bastard, but the distance is a little too much. And we're not able to get the shot off. Now the circle is going to rotate to the north, the northeast exactly, somewhere around the hill and dam area with the fire station. Um, so if you guys are more worried about rotations in this position, I would definitely go ahead and rotate and get out of this spot. But if you guys are looking for kills, I mean, of course, gatekeeping at end game or mid game is a great spot to be in. So I definitely would stay here. Don't know why he was peeking like that. I'm going to be honest. It looked like he did a quick peek trying to find out where we were so he could ping us. But again, dude, hit indicator. Make an educated guess. We have a fight going on inside storage town right now. We have buybacks as well. Now we're sitting on this ledge, very, very ballsy again. Not a huge fan of this at all. Oh, oh, Enemies to the left hand side following the tracers. There he is in the middle of the street. We didn't see him, unfortunately. There he is again. Running across. Nice down. Another one just jumped off the bottom right there where the tracers are coming from. Yep, there he is. And we're looking for one more player that may possibly be oh look at that self res beautiful hit what a flick and look talking about that animation isn't it weird that like they self res and they just like teleport super fast across the map it's the weirdest shit all right we have one enemy right here he's probably saw us flying down maybe he didn't we don't have enough money to, for a buyback we don't have enough money for anything all right, enemies in the bottom of the garage right now putting a lot of pressure on us. We need to get out of the spot. I don't like this at all. I would not hold this angle. Fall back behind, change position, jump off, and go right back under. We're in a bad spot right there. There's no reason to contest. We still could have had a guy on top of that garage because of the first guy that we saw. He could have been up there. If we would have tried to ego challenge him, we could have got pinched by two enemies. But he did chase us down here. Super aggressive enemy right here. I like to see that. But unfortunately, because he left cover, he lost the gunfight. Now, this right here is extremely important for you guys to pay attention to when it talks about your 1v1 gunfights. This guy had the edge. He had us hit first. This should have been a good fight for him to win. But because he decided to leave the cover right here and go out in the middle of the street, all we had to do was flick on him and get the shots off. And even if we wouldn't have had a sniper, again, just using a simple AR would have beamed him as well. And if you think I'm crazy, notice what Mr. F did. He played that little wall as long as he possibly could. So again, sitting on 13 kills with 17 players left. We could hit a 20 kill game. I don't really think it's going to happen because the circle's still pretty big and it's not exactly going all the way north to the dam area. 
but we do need to get across because this airfield is a bitch. Our team's already pushed across right there. Is our team an ATC? Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. I'll... Come on, no. Don't do it. Don't do me like that, Mr. F. I'm not sure what they're saying, but I'm really hoping Mr. F is cursing them out. Hey, ATC, you bitches. Please. In and out of the buy, not taking too much time. I love the trophy system on the Bertha. <laughs> like, trophy systems on vehicles is a great play. It really is, but... It's not that great of a play if you're just gonna drive around. If you're not planning on actually pushing enemies, just take it off. You're, they're just gonna disable your car or your vehicle by shooting it. Again, just like we saw with the vehicle earlier, it was extremely easy for us to disable it. Granted, the Bertha's got more armor, but again, with four players shooting at it, it won't take too much time. I'm not against the trophies. Just FYI, I love the trophy play, but you need to start using it to your advantage and pushing the enemies. Don't just use it as a defensive mechanism to drive around a circle and avoid getting shot at. Vehicles are supposed to be a form of transportation or a form of aggression. It's not really something you're supposed to just drive around the edge of the map and pray you don't get shot and killed. I see a lot of players try to do that. They'll try to survive all the way to end game with zero kills just by using a vehicle, and then when they have to actually fight a 1v1 they're very surprised on how they're dying right, there's an enemy hitting hitting a nice little prone next to the buy station again guys no don't prone at buys don't prone at, i mean sorry loadout drops don't prone at loadout drops don't prone at buy stations unless proning means you have a little bit of protection from like a wall or some form of cover all right, and right now we've kind of worked ourselves in a position where we're, we're center circle. Normally, I would tell you guys, do not get center circle because you're going to have a lot of enemies shoot at you from different angles. You could potentially get third party, fourth party, fifth party, and the list goes on, right? Well, the only reason why I'm not against this is because we've already cleared out this area. Granted, someone may rotate wide on us, but I highly doubt it because there's a lot of buildings throughout here. So usually players that are on the outside, they're going to rotate to the closest compound. Watch your back. Always watch your back, but I'm not super against this play. Oh. Right, we'll go ahead and push in the building there's a ping here i'm not sure exactly what the teammate saw but there's a guy sitting in the corner we're just going to leave the building go at a whole different angle and try to win the situation again it's one player in a fight like that guys i mean it's not much you can really do but your best bet is if you're by yourself and you hear enemies pushing you you need to go ahead and peek the window and try to get a knock your best bet in a solo scenario in a squad based game is to get picks knock them out and create a 3v1, create a 2v1, and then finally a 1v1. Maybe you can pull it off. You will never know as long as you keep sitting in corners like this dude here. Also, I wouldn't have sat in the corner period and waited for sound. I would have been peeking these windows, peeking the doorways, peeking the attic right there. I mean, there's so many ways you can just sit there and kind of sidestep and peek to see if enemies are coming to you. So many players are terrified to even look out the window because they think they're gonna get beamed. Just don't sit in the window, just kind of peek it. There's no reason to sit in there and start scrubbing it with Windex and start licking it and stuff like that. That's not what they're there for. Come on, man. Now we've got pings out from teammates. And guys, I want you guys to notice exactly how this team's able to just do what they're doing right now. How everyone on the squad always knows where players are at because everyone's watching different areas and they're pinging their enemies. So now we have pings everywhere. And, and you know the warzone's been up for a year and a half it's kind of crazy i still have to talk about pings but when we spectate random quads what do we never see that's right we never see pings it's the weirdest shit all right, he bought his teammate back and he went back to the buy station again. Just bad decision making. He should have just bought everything while he was there instead of leaving, going back, this and that. And it cost him the down and now his teammates down. However, one of his teammates is playing the wall on a wide right side, which is actually a pretty smart play. I like the fact that he's not clustered with his other three teammates because those guys really weren't. They didn't have it together. There he is jumping in the air again. The hang time is very dangerous. I'm surprised we didn't get the hits. 
There we go. One knock right there. We're still missing one player, though. There he is. The glint in the front door right there to our left-hand side. I don't think Mr. F saw it. But again, you got to analyze that. We knew there were three players by the building. And then you had the two run across that we were shooting at, and there was one missing. That's why that I knew there was a guy at the front door. We got real lucky that he didn't snipe us. But he did close the gap and push us. He was able to get the kill. Woo. Thankfully, our teammates are there in a hurry. We're able to get the res off. Oh, oh good like, shot, bro. Now, it's a 4v1 fight. <laughs> what do you do in this position? Savage, I'm always in 1v4s because my team sucks. It's in game. How do I get out of this? Well, there's really no one tip answer to, to give you guys. It's all based on so many scenarios. You have to worry about terrain. You have to worry about the circle positioning. You have to worry about how aggressive that squad is, how good they are, how clustered together they are, how spread out they are what their cover looks like, what your cover looks like. Now, based on what we have right here, this guy's screwed. I don't care if this dude is Symphony, he's going to die because we have the best cover. As long as we play this correctly, there's no way anyone should be able to kill us. Notice how orange is wide right, then you have green to the wide left. So we have a nice wall of fire to put on the enemy. So again, if he hides behind a tree, a rock, we have different, ang we have different angles we can shoot at the enemy and get some shots off on him. So I don't see this lasting too much longer. And he's trying his best to create separation. You better pray he's got a sniper because in this position, this is only bet. Grenades going out. He's just going to be overstaying right here. And again, teammate going to far right side, even though he gets the kill. We're there to shoot him in the other side. But there it is. GG. But guys, when it comes to being more aggressive in war zone, it's really quite simple, especially in quads. Stop hiding like a baby back bitch. Ping your enemies. Create a little bit of separation with your teammates. That way you can fight enemies at different angles. When you guys start holding hands and holding pockets, it may help you guys from time to time if you're, blo if you're bulldozing through buildings or playing Rebirth Island or things like that. But in a big ass map like this, you guys are clustered together and there's a squad that's like this that's spread out. All they gotta do is just put fire on you and take you out because you're all just there. It's a lot harder to contest a team that's spread out because you have to flick from one enemy to another while you're getting shot by four enemies. If the enemies are all clustered together, what do you have to do? All you have to do is aim at one target and you can get a quad kill. Also guys, UAVs and pings are crucial. Please guys, start utilizing UAVs and pings. I do see an increase of players using UAVs. So that's freaking awesome, but we do not see that many people pinging enemies to so make sure you guys are on top of it. I don't care if it's difficult on controller. I don't care what the reason is. Try your best to ping it out. Or if you can't ping it, call it out on the microphone. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel today. But until next time, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.